Ideas are wonderful things, so full of possibilities. So much excitement folded up into a single notion that you can barely express the proper language to express this little bit of genius that just popped into your head, right? We've all been there. Now, some of us claim to be idea people, meaning that our strengths lie in seeing the world not as it is, but rather as it could be. These people are so great to be around because they generate so much energy and excitement. It just lights up the room with electricity, right? You've all got a plan. You're starting a business tomorrow. But an idea without action is a nightmare. And therein lies the tricky part, right? Everyone loves ideas, but the actual implementation of an idea is less perfect. It's gritty. It's filled with traps and failures. It's not as exotic, right? It's the sense realism sets in. Now, as an entrepreneur myself, I work with a lot of other entrepreneurs and you know, I just love the imagination and the energy that these people generate. It's infectious. In fact, it's their greatest strength, but also it can be their greatest weakness. And that's that implementation piece, right? New stuff is exciting and colorful, right? Implementation of yesterday's idea is bland and boring. It's details. It's building stuff you don't want to like to do. It's learning new skills. It's full of analysis and hole poking. After all, who likes a hole poked in your idea? You were just super excited about it, right? And now you got to throw it against the wall and, and try and break it. That's, that's not very pleasant, right? So what is that balance? Can you leverage the strength of an idea generator with the pragmatism of an implementer? Quite often, you'll see successful businesses with exactly this type of partnership. After all, like someone has to do the work, right? Someone's like, big ideas, we should do this. And someone that turns around and gets it done, right? So this is the beast that ultimately must be tamed, right? It's tricky. It takes time. And really, to be honest, it's about choosing what not to do rather than what to do. Because the ideas don't stop coming. The, the trick is picking one and then chasing it down. So sometimes it's switching that dial from do to not do is enough to set you on the path to success and take that next step. Um, and with that comes permission not to chase every shiny thing that comes your way. As an entrepreneur, that we, we have this obligation that we must chase every single piece. And you kind of have to give yourself a pep talk and say, you know what, it's okay to let that one go or give it to someone else, right? Uh, it's, it's really that permission to fail. You've got to try things. So. Most entrepreneurs chase ideas with such enthusiasm because ultimately you're terrified of failure, but failure relative to what, right? So if you're given that view, maybe passing on a shiny thing is really the success. Maybe narrowing in your scope or your niche, maybe that is, that's the big success. So save your energy for your one true path and call that your success, right? So you're just reframing it in another way. Letting that go is not a failure. Um, so finally, choose your hill. Plant your shiniest thing there inside a seed of potential and let it grow. Let the rest blow by in the wind.